So let's talk about some methods for uh, computing probabilities. Uh, the first is called the empirical method. Um, this is also known as a uh, or the relative frequency method. So this involves actually conducting an experiment many, many times and recording the outcomes and uh, then converting counts to proportions and then we use these proportions uh, as estimates of probability and you know according to the law of large numbers uh, the more we do this the better our results are going to be so for example let's say that we are going to uh, uh, call a thousand people and that's my abbreviation for people uh, and ask um, do you intend to vote in the next election? And so we keep track of our results and we give people uh, the choice of saying yes they intend to vote, no they do not, or they are undecided. Um, Decide. That's well. Yeah, that's supposed to be undecided there. And so these are the responses. And here's the count. How many people gave this certain response? So let's say uh, that there were. Uh, we'll be optimistic and say that there were 650 uh, who said they do intend to vote, and maybe there were 250 who said no. So let's see, that's, that's not, that would mean that there were 100 who were undecided. So we can convert these counts to percentages. That's uh, our relative frequency. And so this would be 0 0.65, 0 0.25, and 0 0.10. Or if you prefer percentages, 65%, 25%. Or 10%, and so we could say that uh, you know if you call someone randomly, the uh, chance that they will say they intend to vote is 65%. So we're using these proportions uh, uh, as estimates for the probability. And again, as a reminder, um, the uh, more data that we collect, the better these estimates are going to be. And in fact, in the long run, if we could do this many, 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 many times, or infinitely many times, uh, then we would say that this proportion is, in fact, the probability. So that's one method, the empirical method. Uh, it involves actually conducting the experiment, and to get good results, you need to do it many times. So another option is the classical method, sometimes called the theoretical method. And so this does not involve actually conducting the experiment. Uh, it just involves a knowledge of the elements that are in a an event, uh, uh, that define an event, and uh, the elements that are in a sample space. So uh, we will have a an event, and I'm just going to call it E, and it has a certain number of elements in it. Uh, um, so we'll say that there are n elements in this event, and then there's, a, of course, a sample space. So uh, the way that we can calculate the probability for an event using the classical method is that we take the number of elements that are in that event relative to the number of elements in the entire sample space. So this lowercase n with the parentheses, that's the number of elements or items uh, in E and then that's divided by the number of elements in S. So for instance uh, let's say that I define an event to be uh, the outcomes 2, 4, and 6 and this is with the experiment of rolling a die where my sample space is 1, 2, 3, 
4, 5, and 6. So uh, the probability for E is the number of things in E over the number of things in S. In other words, this would be 1, 2, 3 over 6, and we can reduce that to a half, um, or if you'd rather, you can convert this to a decimal or a percentage. Uh, so there is the classical method. Now, there is a restriction on the classical method, uh, and I'm going to put this here. This is, uh, this is for equally likely outcomes. So, uh, if we uh, go to the previous example, and I said uh, there are, you know, there are three outcomes here. A person could reply yes, no, or undecided, and maybe I'm going to call an event. Uh, I'll name it Y, and that's uh, the event, you know, that I get the response of yes, and I'm interested in the probability of Y, the probability of a yes. And so I might, you know, attempt to use this method of say, well, the number of elements are in this over the number of elements in my sample space. Well, there was one response in this collection. It's uh, just the response yes, so that's one thing there. And there were three possible responses, yes, no, or undecided. So I may be tempted to say that the probability is a third. However, I know that these are actually not equally likely outcomes, and so that would be a mistake uh, to try to use the classical method here. Uh, another common example uh, to show why we would not want to use the classical method uh, just uh, when things are not equally likely. Uh, if I said that today it's either going to rain or it's not, and so what's the probability of rain? Well. Uh, it's not always one half. Uh, so even though that's one possibility out of two, uh, on a given day the possibility of rain could be 0% or up to 100%. So just make sure that when you're using the classical method, each of these outcomes is equally likely. Uh, and this is not really a computation, but I will just mention uh, that there is such a thing as subjective uh, probability. And so this is just a uh, probability that it is based on personal judgment. Now that doesn't mean that it's an uneducated guess. Uh, sometimes we'll get subjective probabilities from experts and they may be uh, pulling from a you know, wealth of knowledge in order to uh, you know, give their personal judgment. And uh, so for instance, uh, if someone is you know, making an, a, um, an estimate of the probability that a certain team will win in an upcoming match, um, then they may be analyzing a lot of data uh, and to come up with their uh, a likelihood of th that a certain team will win. But, uh, you know, they're not using the classical method, uh, there's, which would always be, you know, they're either win or lose, and so there would be a 50-50 chance. And they're not really using the empirical method unless they were to say, these two teams have played, you know, a hundred times before, uh, and in those hundred matchups, Team A has won 60% of the time. Now, if that was the basis for them uh, making this judgment, uh, then uh, then that would be uh, using an empirical method. But usually, uh, when we say that uh, someone is uh, just using their personal judgment, uh, and it's not based used on the empirical method or classical method method, we say that that's subjective probability. Alright, I hope you'll join me in future videos. There are some additional lessons on uh, more rules for probability. We've got some addition rules and multiplication rules. Uh, I'll see you next time.